Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today if you're new around here? My name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and on this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants and in today's video we're talking about molasses and specifically unsulfured molasses and we're going to be doing a, another plant hack or a garden hack. It's a part of the hack series where we look at the crazy things of the internet to determine whether or not science can prove them real or fake. And I actually stumbled across this plant hack from a follower. She DM'd me on either Instagram or Facebook, I can't remember. I will leave the links for both of those avenues down below if you wanna come join me in that realm of the world. And she said, I keep hearing about unsulfured molasses for your soil. Is this real? Do I do it? I am lost. And let's just jump into the science of whether or not this is true. Molasses is sugar. It's actually a byproduct from refining sugar. Correct me if I'm wrong. Comment down below if you actually know what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's a byproduct of refining sugar cane. And it's very high in micronutrients and it's obviously very high in carbs and carbohydrates. So in particular, this person who DM me said that the common theme is unsulfured molasses. If you use sulfured molasses, there won't be a huge issue either way. Actually, I find it surprising that people are pushing for the unsulfured molasses because sulfur is really great at killing off fungi that is harmful. So powdery mildew, for example, sulfur is really great at lessening that fungi. But I can see like if you're using this to actually in your compost or in your soil to increase microbial activity, it would make sense that you're using unsulfured because sulfur does kill fungi. So maybe that's where that's coming from. If anyone's heard of this or knows what other influencers are talking about when they're talking about unsulfured molasses, comment down below if you know the reason why they're saying unsulfured. So some of the micronutrients that I wrote down that come out of molasses is calcium, magnesium, iron, and potassium, and a whole other host of micronutrients. So there, it's actually pretty good stuff when we're talking about it from a chemical compound side to benefiting your plants. The application rate, the general consensus of what I found was three tablespoons per gallon of water. Now I find this reasonable. I find this more reasonable that the claims of sugar water are using corn syrup in your for water in your plants I find this to be actually pretty diluted so I don't think you'd end up with the same effects that I was talking about in my sugar water video however if you up the concentration you're kind of getting into that danger zone I think the three to one ratio is very reasonable if we're trying to support microbial life instead of giving the plant false hope with a massive carbohydrate influx. From a micronutrient standpoint, obviously, and a macronutrient standpoint, obviously the plant is going to be able to take these up. We're gonna benefit the plant in some way. Now, if you're using compost or manure or inorganic fertilizer, almost anything, you're probably not going to be struggling with any of these nutrients anyway, so I don't know how molasses is going to be a huge benefit in that regard. But let's just jump into my thoughts on whether or not this is debunked or this has some validity to it. Microbes, if you watch the micro video, are opportunistic feeders and they love sugar. So they're going to eat whatever sugar you provide to them, whether that be in a compost manure, a fruit sugar format, or if it's in something that's maybe not so natural, such as a molasses mixture. They're going to utilize it. And with that, they are also going to flourish and expand and make more of them. So microbes in general reproduce at a rate of two times their initial population within 20 minutes under ideal circumstances. So when we apply the molasses, we're gonna have a massive influx of microbes, whether that be in a compost pile, a manure pile, or into our soil. However, if we don't keep applying that influx of sugar and carbohydrates, we can't actually hold or withstand the new microbial population. So we're actually gonna have a mass die off shortly after all that carbohydrate and that sugar has been consumed. So in my mind, I think, well, if we had this massive influx, we didn't keep on adding molasses every 
hour, say, I don't know how long it's gonna take him to digest it, there's no studies on this, but say we're not adding molasses every day, obviously, because we don't want an anaerobic environment because we do have to mix in water too, and so our microbial populations die off. That makes sense. But now we have a bunch of dead microbes, and those dead microbes can technically be eaten by other microbes, and therefore they're still a food source that's in excess so we're not gonna have a mass die off, we'll have a mass die off and then we'll have another influx because we have all this dead microbial stuff in the soil. So in theory, molasses will increase microbial activity, which will increase the rate of nutrient cycling. But the focus of what they're eating isn't maybe necessarily directed to the dead microbes because that's probably not the easiest for them to break down because they've got manure and compost and all this other organic material that they can break down. But as a general rule in environment, in the world around us, in mother nature, is that mother nature kind of knows what she's doing. And anytime we decide to interfere with that by adding excess of something, uh, great change or rapid change never works in our favor as gardeners. And so molasses, while it will fill your microbes, feed your microbes and you will have a massive microbial explosion and then probably a massive microbial extinction and then a slight, slight microbial rise. Is it worth it? I don't know the answer to that. This is the first garden myth where I'm on the fence. It's not debunked, but it's not proven either. Like I don't think it's a great idea but it does what it says it's gonna do. <laughs> but is what it's gonna do gonna benefit your plants? Very hard to say. I mean, microbes are so small that I don't think you're going to have a massive rise in acidity due to a bunch of dead microbes. I don't think it's going to affect your pH negatively. I think if you wanna try this, there's absolutely no harm in doing so. And if you see good results, there's absolutely no harm in continuing. I also think it's probably pretty beneficial if you want exponential growth or rapid decomposition of a compost pile. I, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't do this. In a gardening scenario, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't do it. Are you wasting your money? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you gotta try it, you gotta see if it works for you. If it does, then continue to use it. But what's gonna do something similar to that effect that's gonna be much more gradual and much more sustainable, it's actually just top dressing with a compost or a manure or some sort of organic material that's partially decomposed by anthropods or by macro uh, bugs, and then letting your microbes feed off of that. That's gonna be much more uh, gradual and sustainable. If you want a huge explosion, then yeah, molasses is definitely the route to go. But yeah, shortest video in a while, mostly because it's a garden hack and my garden hack videos are generally pretty, pretty short. So if you guys are new here, which 3,000, 4,000-ish of you are, I have a garden hack series where I actually take hacks that you may hear on the internet or in the world and I apply the science to it to, to give you guys an idea on whether or not it's going to work. If you have a plant hack you would like me to investigate and look into, please let me know in the comments down below. I am more than happy to do this series. It's honestly one of my favorites. Some of the ideas in the, out there in the world are wild, wild. I love them. There's one where the guy talks about using his own urine, I think, to water his plants and how beneficial it is. Haven't gotten the guts to research that one yet. I'd have to look into like the values of human urine and it's just haven't decided to cross that barrier just yet. Maybe if I get bored, we'll have to look at that hack. I want to thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.